Hello and welcome to Medicine in 5 Minutes. My name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. This is a series on my YouTube channel where we look at medical topics in the shortest space of time. Today in this episode, we shall look at severe acute asthma. So when you talk about severe acute asthma, this is pretty much an exacerbation of asthma that has not been controlled by the use of standard medication. Some features of acute severe asthma include inability to complete sentences in one breath, a respiratory rate that's greater than 25 breaths per minute, tachycardia greater than 110 beats per minute. Some patients may also have pulses paradoxes, but this is not a useful clinical feature as it's only seen in 45% of the cases. Some patients may also have use of accessory muscles, of respiration, paradoxical movements of the chest and the abdomen, a peak expiratory flow rate of less than 50% of the predicted normal or best value. Features of a life-threatening attack include a silent chest, cyanosis, or a feeble respiratory effort, exhaustion, coma, confusion. There may be bradycardia or hypotension, or there may be presence of some complications such as a pneumothorax, a telectasis, or there may be a peak exploratory flow rate of less than 30% of the predicted normal value or the best value, which is roughly around 150 liters per minute in adults. In individuals that have a very life-threatening attack, there may be a high arterial partial pressure of carbon dioxide that is greater than 42 millimeters of mercury. There may be severe hypoxemia with an arterial partial pressure of oxygen that is less than 60 millimeters of mercury. Despite you giving them oxygen treatment, they may be having an oxygen saturation of less than 90%, a low or even a falling arterial pH. Now, when you talk about the management of this condition, remember that it is an emergency. So you want to assess the patient and admit the patient. You want to keep them calm, reassure them, do your ABCs. So you want to ensure that the airway is clear and patent. You want to give humidified oxygen about 100%, 3 liters per minute through a face mask. Aim for an oxygen saturation of between 94 to 98%. You want to give venous access and give 3 liters of fluid per day. So you want to give 1 liter of normal saline and 2 liters of 5% dextrose because they are losing these fluids as they are respiring and they're using energy. You also want to add 20 millimoles of potassium chloride to one liter of any of the fluids that you've been giving in the past 24 hours. Certain drugs that you may give include um, nebulized subutamol about 5 milligrams or tebutaline 10 milligrams stat. Then you later follow this by subutamol 2.5 milligrams for hourly. You may also add ipratropium bromide about 0.5 milligrams to the nebulized subutamol or tebutaline, whatever you may be using. You want to give an intravenous injection of hydrocortisone 200 milligrams that's about four milligrams per kg four hourly for the first 24 hours then you can continue with prednisolone about 60 milligrams orally daily for the next two weeks and then taper it off you may give aminophilin 250 milligrams that's one milligram per kg per hour iv over five to ten minutes then of course give a maintenance dose of 100 milligrams and aim to give less than 500 milligrams over 24 hours of aminophilin. You want to reduce the dose in patients who have heart disease, in patients with liver disease, as well as patients that are on beta blockers. And of course, do not forget to give your aminophilin with oxygen. And in patients that are actually taking it orally in the last eight hours, they should not receive the loading dose. If the individual has any respiratory infections, treat those. If there's no improvement, consider performing endotracheal intubation and mechanical ventilation in ICU. You may also give additional drugs such as salbutamol infusion 3 to 20 micrograms per minute or tebutaline 1.5 to 5 micrograms per minute or you could even give magnesium sulfate 1.2 to about 2 grams over 20 minutes. To remember this management algorithm, remember the first thing is oxygen, the second thing is salbutamol, the third thing is hydrocortisone, the other thing is hypertropion bromide and the fifth thing is theophylline. You can remember this and use aminophylline. So if you take the first letter of each word, that gives you your management mnemonic. Thank you for taking your time to listen to this review on medicine in five minutes concerning severe asthmatic attacks. Until next time, my name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. Bye-bye.